So I'm Andrew Jamieson. I'm the chief executive of the new offshore renewable energy catapult, which is what I'm going to talk to you very briefly about just now. I'm also chairman of Renewable UK, uh, so you might have seen me there before. Um, but the catapult, what is it? I guess you're all asking. Uh, so this is what I hope to tell you about. The catapult is a new initiative set up by the UK government to support technology innovation that we haven't done in the UK for a long, long time. It's done on a worldwide basis, taking stuff that emerges from SMEs, universities, uh, so slightly advanced stages of research and development, but supporting businesses and concepts and turning them into commercial prospects is the vision of the catapult program. There are seven catapults being established. They're all listed there on the right-hand side. Many of them, many of them have got strong synergies to bring to the offshore renewable energy sector in ways that we just haven't contemplated before. I've only been in the business six months. It is really exciting as to what opportunities lie ahead. So we will be uh, setting up this catapult now, uh, but it, it bridges the gap between research and industry, which is the key thing I want to just keep uh, bringing forwards. But let me just do, we've been talking about overviews and where is the industry today, so let me do mine. No numbers on it, quite deliberately. But this is a Boston box vision of offshore renewable energy. That's w uh, wind, wave, and tidal. Um, and on the left-hand axis, on the, on the axis, vertical axis, sorry, renewables energy installed capacity, and on the bottom axis, UK economic value. And what I'm saying is, I'm in that box in the upper right. That's my vision. I want to see the biggest industry that the UK can provide and I want to see maximum economic value come back to the UK. And as we all know, there are challenges in this sector. There, there are numerous challenges. But we've heard from presenters this morning, the vision is there that we can overcome many, many of the barriers. But we do need to change how we do things. We need to collaborate a lot more. We need to address our issues. And we need to fix things. And the catapult will play a role in that, not an encompassing doing everything role, but certainly around the technology and certainly around bringing industry together uh, to do a lot more. So we want to provide leadership in the innovation space within the sector. We want to integrate key players across the university space, across the industry space, and across the public sector space. Because as I'll talk about in a second, there are some fantastic things going on in innovation in our sector. Just some of it lacks a bit of visibility. So it's all about accelerating technologies. So to do this, the Catapult is looking to create a center of excellence. Let me put a plug in right now. We are, we're going to be based in Glasgow. We're recruiting right now. So if you come and see us on the stand, we'll be able to tell you more about that through the conference. But this is big. This is between 100 and 150 people over the next five years of engineers and technologists and commercial people who can spot innovation opportunities, who can work with people moving towards the next thing that, and supporting you know, new technologies in ways that we haven't thought about before, new engineering and technological solutions that we haven't thought about before, all in the context of addressing the industry's issues, but also, as I, I talked about in my earlier slide, about making sure we've got the best capacity here in the UK with maximum economic value. So this is a simple example. The tenor of the debate in offshore energy tends to focus on, are the OEMs coming to the UK? People think about turbines, and then they think about the electricity market reform debate. Absolutely right. That needs to be done. That's critical to the delivery, certainly of offshore wind, and I guess ultimately to wave and tidal, because if wind fails, I wouldn't like to be betting on the prospects for wave and tidal thereafter. However, more encouragingly, this is what I want to bring to people uh, the, the, the challenge to think about a bit more. At least 50%, at least 50% of a project's value is balance of plant. It's foundations, it's cabling, it's switch gear. It's also the know-how about how we put projects together. So if we've got these fantastic large programs that uh, the Crown Estate and others have been saying, this is what we can do in the UK, that presents first mover advantage for the UK on a global basis. It's very similar to what happened in oil and gas here in the UK, where people said, well, that's just the Americans. They're just going to extract value. We'll have nothing. And now look what you've got around Aberdeen and the size and scale of companies who provide technical and expert services around the globe. That's my vision for offshore renewable energy for the UK. We'll have manufacturing capacity, but we'll certainly have know-how capacity in deploying and, and utilizing technology. So first mover advantage, very, very important. 
This is a complicated slide and it's meant to be, but I, I, I left Scottish Power after many, many years uh, last year to take on the catapult role. So I came out this grey box at the top, and this is an illustration that if you're in that grey box at the top, if you're in an industry and you look into the innovation space, it's very complicated. You don't know who to be speaking to about what programme and who's going to support you next and so on. So just adding a catapult on its own, I don't think is going to be, you know, so game changing. However, I've been speaking to the chief executives of all these institutions you can see on the list here. Uh, and what we're looking to do is provide the right types of collaborative arrangements and frameworks so that we can prioritise the industry's needs for innovation. So even though I've got a centre of excellence in the Glasgow of, as, as I say, up to 150 people, we will not know everything and how to do everything. But a lot of these institutions sitting on, on this page will be able to add an awful lot of value to that. So rest assured, I will be working very, very hard to have the best arrangements we can with these existing institutions. So we've got all this joined up thinking going on. Um, Fraunhofer's are listed on the left-hand side as well. That's the European similar institutions to the Catapult. Uh, we will be working with similar institutions as well. Because again, some of those guys have got very, very advanced learning and, and thinking that um, we're not quite deploying here. But what I want to do is simplify things. This is a very illustrative picture, but it says, you know, if you're doing something in energy, you start on the left-hand side with science, usually at university. Somebody understands the power of waves, for example, how frequent are they, how much energy is in them. And then somebody does the technology bit and invents a gizmo to extract the energy. And eventually it goes to big test and engineering at the bottom here. And again, in, t in terms of the tenor of the, the debate and the focus today, I would warrant innovation sits in that kind of narrow envelope there. Not always. But largely, what the catapult can do is to try and address that and do more of that all-encompassing thing to support those guys who are doing the bigger testing end of things. But let's start at some of the beginnings as well and understand some of the fundamentals of what this, these processes and energy processes are actually all about. So drawing together all of the UK's inputs to help those guys at that further end. And what that will do is widen that narrow oval over to the right. We'll have lots more mass manufacturing. And you can see that much more readily in things like wave and tidal. It's within our grasp. So just to finish, some of the projects that we're establishing the catapult with. Production and deployment is about standards. If you compare offshore renewable energy to conventional generation, uh, there is a dearth of standards. People running coal plants and gas plants know exactly what those plants are doing second by second. We don't know enough in offshore energy. Uh, and if we're going to go to round three, which is obviously much, much bigger programs than we have today, and if we want to see uh, marine devices go from single devices at EMEC into array stages, we, oh, lost my slide. We need to know more about what, what are the types of plant that we're running and how do you run them. Reliability and performance is critical to that. Again, all of this happens in the conventional generation world. We need to see it happening in, uh, in, in our world. And it's a challenge, and it's been attempted be before. Um, but again, if we can bring people together and actually re recognize the value of what having a lot more information at our fingertips actually are, is to us, then that becomes a very valuable proposition. And it also allows SMEs and clever people to come in and say, using all this data about wind yield and performance of turbines and, and how reliable are your cables, actually allows new companies to emerge to manage these things more readily in ways that we haven't talked about before. And I was really encouraged by uh, Ben Sykes from Dong speaking earlier on, because I think he's got some of that vision. There, there, are, there are things going on in the future program that we aren't quite touching on yet, and I want to put the catapult exactly in that space. Uh, and the minister, Ver, uh, Fergus Ewing, very encouragingly talked about our marine farm accelerator where we're working with the, with the Carbon Trust uh, very closely uh, to mirror and, and, provide, and come lessons learned from the offshore wind accelerator and taking that into the marine context. So we've got some fantastic things going on. But we're going to build up the pipeline, as this last slide, uh, box says on the, on the right-hand side. A lot of that will be about data. It will be about reliability. And it'll be about making sure that this industry is more confident about its future. And that goes from everybody, from the developers to the supply chain to the financial community, and I guess ultimately the government and the general public at large. So it's a long-term program being established by the government and the catapults. It's, I've got a budget that will run for five years, but that's an initial five years. European models have been running for many decades, and I can assure you that's the absolute vision from this government and in the catapult program. So we have a stand downstairs. You can hear more from us uh, over the next couple of days, and I'd be delighted to speak to you. 
But that's the brief introduction. Okay, thank you very much.